the bounty hunters. I will kill you! The scream is punctuated by an explosion of flame from the Apuk, whose mood is quite literally apocalyptic. There's little point to being stealthy, at least not in the conventional sense. Shaymari is beyond furious that he had hurt her up close, at range and outsmarted her in a single fight. The stinging lashes to her towering ego made her blind to the fact she was blinding herself as she hurled warfire around with reckless abandon. The axiom was getting more and more scrambled, blurring what little presence he had in it to begin with, and the sheer brightness of the flame meant that if he kept one between him and her, she couldn't see him, hear him, or smell him but he could easily hear the cursing, stomping, swearing monster that refused to shut the fuck up. You will scream your throat to ragged meat. But at this point, fighting her was like trying to shoot a forest fire, a waste of ammo if you do it conventionally. He has a plan, and as he thinks he refines it. I will eat your craven heart. He can hurt her. If he charges enough axiom into a bullet, it penetrates, and a heavy enough concentration in the plasma of his sword had left a painful burn across her torso. He also has a limb he can sacrifice again and again. Even now, he's reshuffling the internal components of the prosthetic arm to manifest it again. His eyes are used to the brightness and he's low to the ground. The fire suppressant systems overhead are spraying in vain as warfire is not something they're equipped to handle. It does, however, cover him fairly well with a thin layer of fire-retardant foam, and that's a big help by itself. Nothing can save you. The problem is that she's no doubt looking for that signature of him empowering his weapons. She's paying attention to that as she rampages, and when she senses it, she'll focus on him. But he has to do it to do any damage, however. Even if he's right behind her, she's so fast that he can't charge things up in time. He's used all his grace periods, and if she falls for the same trick again, then it's because she hemorrhaged something in her brain and has literally gone retarded. Your soul will bleed. And to be frank, hoping your enemy has suffered sudden and acute brain damage is a bad plan. I will pull out your entrails through your asshole. Evidence of spontaneous retardation aside his best bets are the heart, brain, or base of the neck. She moved to protect her upper torso so there's no way in hell there aren't vital organs there. There's a brief moment where his overclocking mind muses that with how large the asses of most aliens are, they could fit the vast, vast majority of their vital organs within them. Your ship will be reduced to slag. He focuses again. The adrenaline is catching up and he needs to use his axiom. I will crush your children to a pulp. He had heard of men using adrenaline cut with axiom to accelerate to the point of absurdity. If he can use it hard enough, he should have at least one good shot. He also considers that while she might be able to sense a bullet being made unstoppable or a plasma sword being made more intense, an infinitely sharp boot knife is something new. He sheathes the plasma sword. It's only good for a straight-up fight, and that'll kill him right out. I will maim you so thoroughly your ancestors won't recognize you. So he has two things he can imbue to catch her. Good. He glances at his communicator. Bike has used 20 seconds of his allotted two minutes. He tucks it away and draws out his boot knife. He focuses the axiom along the blade, creating a projection from it, thinner and thinner until it stretches out by an inch and narrows down to an atomic scale. A quick swing and he grins. Good, it didn't cause a nuclear explosion. That's a relief. I will rend you to a paste one fingertip at a time. It goes next through his body to reinforce it to resist the hell he's about to put it through. It doesn't matter how fast you are, if your initial burst of speed rips your skin off, you done fucked up. What are you doing to my home? A new voice demands from not too far away from Shea Marie. A distraction? There is a god. His bones, muscles, organs, nerves, skin, and equipment. His cybernetics, too. 
everything gets Axiom running through them primed to reinforce him. Back off or be burnt to ashes, you pathetic whore. He takes a deep breath of the Axiom-infused air around him and holds it still. It won't do for his lungs to collapse after all. What is... The second voice begins, and Pukey rams as much Axiom as he can into his adrenaline. The world stops and color dies. He races through the fire as hard as he can, the plating buckling under his footsteps. The fire is solid enough to offer resistance, but he shatters it like sugar glass. The fire retardant foam spraying from above is frozen in pale sheets that are flung out of his way even as he races forward. Shaymari is screaming at a massive Zedin, huge and voluptuous even by their standards and clearly both pregnant and pissed off if her stomach and the bright axiom glow along her tail mean anything. He brings the knife up and swings for the Apuk's neck. She melts out of the way of the attack. He's failed. He failed, and now he's going to die. His last gamble came up snake eyes. But he's not going out without as many pounds of flesh as he can carve as he slams into the deck with his feet to turn as hard as he can, suddenly pressing against what feels like a waterfall made by his own wake. He can see that the war fire he ran through is shattering in a circular pattern as if a bomb went off in the middle of it. The knife comes up, a wake of impossibly sharp axiom following it as Shea Marie starts backing up, her eyes wide in shock at the sudden turn. The Zedin is moving as well. Apparently his sudden dash and attack has put her into fuck it mode and she's going for a shanking. Fine. Hopefully she chooses the Apuk whore. He thrusts and makes contact. She tries to catch it and loses her right thumb and index finger. He sends the knife towards her heart and the carved hand comes for him. He raises his hard light arm and throws in as much axiom as he can. The arm for the briefest of moments is utterly indestructible and it stop her blow. However, he's overclocked it so hard that the prosthetic detonates like a hand grenade right next to his face and welded to his left shoulder no less. The unimaginable bitch then dodges completely out of the way of the stabbing knife, and he races forward only for her to slam his back with her other hand. His adrenaline pumps again, and he pours in more axiom even as he feels his skin ripple and the blood vessels burst. A couple ribs are broken, but luckily she missed the spine. Reality somehow slows further as he tumbles through the air, just in time for him to see the massive black blade brimming with axiom erupt through the chest of Shea Marie. Something grabs his leg, butt, back and head all at once and reality moves out of super slow motion. He's suddenly dangling upside down in the grip of the massive Tzedin, the sound of sizzling as the fire-retardant foam suddenly works. He breathes in gulps of the rapidly cooling air and tries to orient his thoughts, but the deceleration, while mostly bled out by his captor, is still enough that he's going to be shocked if he doesn't have a concussion from it. Shea Marie's corpse, still impaled on the massive black tail blade, is dangled in front of him. I normally strive to be a gentlewoman to men. However, when this kind of madness makes its way into my home, endangers my daughters and results in my needing to murder no less than an Apuk war princess, I need some answers to keep those manners. Fair. Pukey pants out as exhaustion hits him hard enough for his vision and thoughts to swim. A sense of sheer discomfort overtakes him. His stomach revolts and he forces the bile back down, up and into its proper place. He then points at the corpse with the knife still in his hand. The joint seemed to have locked into place unwillingly. Getting that knife out of his grip is going to be a bitch. She's the reason Deck 8 is about to riot. She had Mother Mailer killed in public and her babies too. Do you have proof? The Zedin asks and he shakes his right hand. Can't my hand. Too much axiom. Need a minute. He grunts and is slowly let down. The corpse of Shea Marie is flopped down in front of him. He then sits cross-legged and starts to use his half-melted boots to try and force the knife out of his uncooperative fingers. 
After a moment, a trinity of hands reaches around him. One grabs his wrist, the other the knife, and the last one pries his fingers open. Thank you, he says, rubbing the numbed hand on his knee. There's some movement. He reaches into his shirt and grabs his communicator and painfully gets bike on contact. Boss, J3 and Tang are almost in position. We just need another 30 seconds. Belay that bike. Bitch be dead. Sending image, Pukey says, and there's a pause. How did you do that? I had assistance. It was still a near thing. I need video from the deep desire. Please tell me we got her confession on record. We do, but these things are far too easy to fake. No matter what, someone's going to spiral into paranoia. Send it anyways, I need to see it, the Dzedin says from behind Pookie. That the one who helped, Bike asks. I'll be the one who does something very different from helping if I don't get some evidence into what is going on. All right, all right. Stand by for a moment, Bike says, and then... The conversation that was less than five minutes ago, but feels like days ago, plays right in front of him in the Zadin. Pukey then looks up to her and he can't decipher Zadin's facial expression. Her body language says, shocked though. Good job, Bike. Make sure that and whatever security footage of this place you can get is sent around the station. Hopefully the building riot will be quelled. Already on it. We're also pulling up some images from you in space. With all of it together, things should have a nice little bow on them. We're not done yet. We still need to find out where that fake image and the scapegoat came from. Pukey reminds him and Bike looks concerned. How about you hit the sack? You look like you tried to kill Lawnmower with your teeth, Bike says, and Pukey scoffs before wincing as it agitates his ribs. Yay, stand by for Tang and J3. They're going to get you out of there and into a hospital bed. Fine, fine. Miss Yzma, is it? Do you need anything else? Pukey asks, looking back, and has the distinct pleasure of seeing Adzidin's jaw drop in incredulity. She visibly tilts her head to look at the dead Apuk before tilting it back to him. She does it twice more and then leans back a little. So that fight was a lot more balanced than I thought? She asks in an amused tone. No, the fight was distinctly unfair so I had less than zero interest in fighting fair. He returns with a wide smile that she gives back. She's really gone. What? Larissa Mailer. We weren't the closest, but she was my friend. I'm sorry you had to learn this way. What happened to the assassins? Killed by their own organization. They don't tolerate people breaking contracts. Who put them there? A paranoid station manager who's new here. He sent them to observe and intimidate. He helped with the investigation. He? Daniel Eastman. I've heard of him. He's known to bring bad news and worry himself in circles, but he gets things done. Isma says just before a very familiar air van sets down. Holy shit, bossman, did you get thrown through a meat grinder? J3 asks, and Pukey lest out a pain chuckle. Something like that. Help me up. The sooner I can get on some morphine, the better. Morphine? Isma asks. Painkiller, ma'am. For humans, at least. For a Zedin, it's just a straight-up killer. Gotta go, ma'am, if you want to talk contact. The chain breaker docked at Section 3. Boys, bring me home. I need a bed. On it, boss. Tang says as he closes the door behind him and rushes in. See you around, missy. J3 says with a cocky salute at Yzma who seems to chuff in amusement as the air van takes off and smoothly rockets away. Sit rep, are the riots quelled? Pukey asks the moment the window is closed. Lytha's broadcasting now. All our evidence is in it. Everything we caught on camera is in it. The only thing we're missing are small chunks of your space fight. Good, good. What was Bike's plan? The pop guns are in the back three shells each. First round would be dry, then some axiom in the second followed by all we could fit into the third. We figured it would either kill her or the station. Either way, the fight's over. Okay, one. We should try to avoid collateral if it includes what we're trying to protect, Pukey says, and there's a round of chuckles. Two, that's all he had? Get our biggest guns and shoot the bitch? 
I had like a two and a half minutes since you were blown out the airlock. I could have held my breath for that whole fight. Bike protests over the van's radio. You can hold your breath for two and a half minutes? Pukey asks curiously. Not the point, Bike barks, and despite the agony of his busted ribs, Pukey laughs out loud. 